Awesome. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. Uh, I'm the guest host this week, Jeff D. The uh, co-host today is Don Baker. Hey, good to be here. Uh, good to have you. It's uh, April 11. We're broadcasting live from Austin, Texas. This is a call-in program. The number will go up uh, in a little while. If you're not, but if you're not watching the show live, you can tune in on Sundays from 4.30 to 6 p.m. and watch the show on Time Warner or uh, Grand Day Cable Channel 16, or you can watch the show over the Internet from almost anywhere in the world via Ustream. And uh, if it's working, the Channel Austin stream. For more information, you can visit the show's website at www.atheist-community.org. Uh, this show is sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. The ACA has weekly meetings at Romeo's on Barton Springs Road every Sunday at 11.30, except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series that takes place at the Austin History Center. We had one of those today, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, the Austin History Center is located at the corner of 9th and Guadalupe. Lectures are at 12.15, and uh, I guess the next lecture will be next month. I don't have the correct information here in front of me. For, but for information on that and on other things about the ACA, you can visit the, uh, the uh, www.atheist-community.org site. In addition to this program, the ACA also sponsors a bi-weekly audio podcast called The Nonprofits. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. Yesterday's show should now be available. Wait, there wasn't a show yesterday. My uh, information is correct. They didn't have a show yesterday, but past shows are available at www.nonprofitsradio.com, and uh, uh, there will be more shows live in future. You can find the schedule there. If you don't manage to contact us over the telephone today, or if you don't want to, and uh, you can uh, send comments and questions to our email address, tv at atheist-community.org. In addition to the media outreach programs, the ACA also sponsors a number of social events, including Atheist Happy Hour on Thursdays at 7 p.m. at the Dog and Duck Pub at 7th and Guadalupe, and dinner after this program is at, uh, well, is at roughly 6.30 at Threadgills at 301 West Riverside Drive. And that's our announcements. Yeah. And the dinner, you know, folks are welcome to come down after watching the show. You can come down and visit with us and have dinner and break, That's right. break bread and all that good That's stuff. That's an open to the public thing. Just don't come down there to preach at us or proselytize at us. If you just want to have a conversation, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we were talking just before we went on the air here. You and I have never done, as far as we can re recollect, <laughs> never right. done the atheist experience together before. That's right. We're both long-time long contributors to the show, but we've never been on together. <laughs> though once, 500 years ago, according to you, uh, <laughs> you were on the audio show <laughs> right, with the nonprofits, me. Right, the nonprofits, right, back when you were running that. That was, that was that's been ago. quite a long time. Well, what do you have for us today? Well, today I'd like to talk about the prosperity gospel. Okay. And um, I, I just find it very kind of humorous because, what, you know, one of the, one of the ironies is <clears throat> there are a lot of religious people don't believe in evolution, but you can take a look at the prosperity gospel and it's an example of religions evolving. You know, religions adapt to the needs of their hosts and they, they adapt to their environment. And schisms are like speciation events where you get two different species and and because of all these changes and all these variations and all these uh, evolution going on, there's no, there's no omniscient God. There's no obvious fixed thing that they're, that, they're, that they're 
commenting on or, 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 or uh, related to, mm -hmm. right? If, if there were a God, there wouldn't be so much variation and, and, and all these changes and things. And the prosperity gospel is a particular variation? It's a particular variation. Well, well let's, look, look, let's look at, well, let's look at the, some of the variations, uh, uh, variations in human needs, right? Oh. Humans have a need for love, and there's many, many uh, churches that, that go that. If, you, if hate is your thing, you can go join one of the Fred Phelps churches or, or whatever. If you want to have multiple wives, you can go be a Mormon. If you want to screw little boys, you can go be a Catholic. Or uh, if you're into uh, Schadenfreude or, or enjoying other people's suffering, then you can be a you know rapture theologist. Uh, but if you're into greed, if greed is your thing, prosperity gospel's for you. I, uh, did you happen <laughs> to notice uh, in this? I think it was this past week the KKK came out with a press release repudiating. Yeah. Uh, Fred Phelps and his uh, God oh, hates right, fags right. Uh, organization. <laughs> yeah, when when the KKK has to, you know, feel out of it's its necessary to, itself to from disassociate you. itself from you. Wow, it's pretty amazing. But so, what what is the prosperity gospel thing all about? Well, that's just it. I want to talk about <clears throat> what it is, how it works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, why it appeals to people, maybe some of the biblical support and what some of the implications are. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to beat up on me if I'm going long. <laughs> Go for it. So prosperity, prosperity theology or prosperity doctrine or the health and wealth gospel is a belief among, uh, found among tens, tens of millions of people centered on the notion that God provides material prosperity for those he favors. So if you're God's little buddy, he's going to shower you with gifts and that believers have a right to the blessings, health, and wealth that they can obtain, and they can obtain those blessings through positive confessions of faith and the sowing of seeds through faithful payments of tithes and offerings. So, so there's sort of two parts to, to the prosperity gospel. One is the expectation, living and breathing the expectation that, that, that you are blessed by God and that you deserve these blessings and these sorts of things. And, and if that means going out and buying a new car that you may or may not be able to afford, that's, that's part of the deal. The, other, the flip side of it is you got to make God happy by tithing to the church and giving to your, your, your church uh, a lot. Uh, and that's the, that's the sowing the seeds part of it. And, and there's many ministers uh, in this prosperity gospel will claim a hundredfold return uh, uh, that if you pay a dollar to the church, uh, eventually you're going to get a hundred dollars back. So, so it's really a, a very almost crass sort of financial thing. So they're they're telling their followers to have an expectation of income. Yes. As long as they pay their tithes and and, and do their blessings. Yes. Yes. And, and, and then and they go out and actually spend money before they've got it th on that, that expectation. That is true, and then that's, oh that's a problem, isn't it? I would think so. You would think so. Um, well, not if they're really, not if it was all true. Yeah, so here's, a, here's a quote by, uh, uh, from Osteen, who is a, tr a famous uh, preacher here in Houston. Uh, one of God's top priorities is to shower blessings on Christians in this lifetime and by the corollary assumption that w one of the worst things a person can do is to expect anything less. Oh my gosh. Isn't that interesting? So, so how it works, how, you know, how it works from an outsider's perspective is, is it's a head, heads I win, tails you lose sort of thing. So you, you have a big congregation, you preach this gospel, and if anybody in the congregation gets a promotion or a new job or, or some sort of windfall from great Aunt Irma dying and giving uh -huh. them you know, you know, money in their will, whatever, you claim that as a success. And, and this, is, this is God's blessing to that person, and gosh, it's working, and so on, right? And, and you really tout these successes, and it's a kind of a confirmation bias okay. thing. If, they, if somebody doesn't get a payout, then there's a couple things you can do. You can say, well, you, you, it'll come. It, it's right, come. it's, just not, it's or, too soon. Or, or you, know, you, you just need to be more faithful, and you need to follow the Scripture more, oh these my. sorts of things. Or you need to tithe more. Right? So, this, so it's, 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 it's to blame like a, the victim. It's like they, a Christian version of The Secret, which was the same kind of Exactly, crap. exactly. There, there's a lot of similarity between these. Is, is this expectation, this wishful thinking, and living, living this way, and if it doesn't work out, there's just something wrong with you. You know that guy, the secret, the secret guy, got arrested for getting some people killed in a um, what do you call it, an Indian? Um, oh right, sweat lodge. Right. 
right? He was he was putting people through the paces to in order to make their their religious experience more more meaningful or something, right? Yeah. And ended up killing how many of them? Killed them? I, I don't recall. Off the top of my, I don't want to <laughs> okay. just throw out a number. Of, yeah. By guessing, but it was several. Several. <laughs> okay. So so it's kind of if you know from from my standpoint, it's a transparent scam. Uh, so that's that's. What I see, and this so is a relatively new thing. Uh, uh, Earl Roberts kind of cooked this up, although you know you, there's threads of it long, long ago, right? The, the Calvinist theology is is about uh, you know you can't change anything, and and if if somebody is rich in this world, it's because God likes them. Uh -huh. uh, there's, there's so there's strains of that going way back, right. but but it's a relatively new thing. It's taken over. Um, it's taken over in in Africa. A lot of a lot of Christian churches. This is a big money making thing in Africa is to is to be a minister over there and preach this stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's 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 uh, videos on the web. And I, I uh, was trying to look one up for the the, AC, the atheist experience blog, but I couldn't find it. Anyway, so why does it appeal? Well, 61 percent of, of Christians in the U.S. believe that God wants us to people to be prosperous. So that's a that's a large percentage of Christians that think God God ought to do this, right? Thirty one percent of people in the United States believe uh, that if you give your money to God, He will bless you with more money. Yeah, you know, I uh, I was was raised in a Methodist household, mm -hmm. and even though there was no explicit preaching of anything I'd call the prosperity gospel from the from the pulpit. There was still this sort of swirling set of assumptions that, yeah, you got to keep putting your money into the collection plate, or you're not going to get your your bennies. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can imagine it's a very appealing uh, sort of message from from a uh, minister's point of view, right? Because uh, after well, all, they're, be, they're trying to make some money here. <laughs> is, is there is there in fact any evidence that it works? I don't think so. Anybody done a study that you that you know of? No, I don't. I Whether don't know the that people that are involved it. in these congregations are in fact any wealthier than anybody else on average? Well, you know, or, there, there's, or there's a, their wealth increases. There, after there's being a very interesting article, kind of jumping ahead a little bit. Uh, there's a very interesting article that was published in the Atlantic Monthly called uh -huh. "Did Christianity Cause the Crash?" And I, I don't like I don't like the title of that article. I think a more apropos title would be "Did, Pro did the Prosperity Gospel Contribute to the Crash?" And in, in that article, the author, uh, I've forgotten her name, makes, makes the point that uh, you can go back and look at some of the churches that are, that are promoting this sort of thing and look at the foreclosure rates in those areas, and they're, they're very much higher. And that she's, huh. she's making a link between this way of thinking of looking like a success and being a success or, or, or looking like you are, are wealthy right. uh, and expecting these blessings uh, to, to tripping up people financially and, and, and getting away from the sound sort of um, fiscal management sorts so of in, practices. So in fact, there's evidence of the opposite. That yes. It, that it not only has, it doesn't just have no effect, it actually is financially dangerous for people. Right, right. And I do want to talk about the implications. Yeah, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Some of the implications I'm, a little bit later. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, we were talking about the popularity of the thing. You know, we have 31 percent of the people that believe that if you give your money to God, that He'll bless you. Well, this is this is, um, uh, and this is especially uh, a true among uh, blacks and Hispanics. Apparently, believe this sort of thing even more so. And so, there's there's actually a huge untapped market. Given these statistics I just gave, uh, based on the number of people who are in the prosperity gospel and the number of people who who it might appeal to, this is definitely a growing thing. It's gonna it's a it's a it's a trend. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see a lot more of this. I think it's a it's an appealing message, and. Um, you see it uh, commonly with these very big evangelical preachers like, uh, um, where's my list here? Uh, Joel Osteen is, is one, although he claims that he never talks about money directly. He talks about <laughs> blessings, which is interesting. Uh, but there's a whole, a whole host of these professors that are these, um, these ministers that do this, and you'll recognize a lot of these names, Kenneth Copeland, uh -huh. Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, um, Peter Popov, Robert Tilton, and of course uh, Pat Robertson. So, so all of the big hitters are mm -hmm. are, are promoting this, and and you know it's an appealing message. After all, why not? Why worship a god that doesn't do anything for you, right? Is right. You, we have these pie in the sky? Oh, you're going to go to heaven, or whatever. Why not have a little bit of goodies now? Why not have an, Why not have both, right? 
So it's very popular, especially in Africa, and it's very popular in populations, I think, that are poor and desperate and gullible, right? Mm -hmm. the, the desperation, you know, this, this really sort of plays into people's desperation, like, I, I, I got to get out of this situation. What's, right. what's the way to do it? Um, and well, like the lottery. Like the lottery. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. So in 50 the only difference is with the lottery, there is, in fact, an organization <laughs> in place that might give you some money. Right. That's the, known for a fact. The money is real there. I mean, it's, it's wow. just more of a matter of how, 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 good, how well can you estimate the odds there. Mm -hmm. here, here, there's no guarantee at all, of course. So 50 of the largest 260 oh. Christian U.S. churches push the prosperity gospel. So how, oh, what's, that per, what, what's that numbers? 50 of the largest... 260 churches uh, in the U.S. push that, and, okay. and it's a pretty, and it's not really a, a theology, it's more of a, a um, an add-on to whatever theology they're, they're already talking about. So you see it a lot in evangelical churches. So, um, and God has gone out of his way to, to give support for this, right? God has gone out of his way to, to make these people honest. And how has he, he done that? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> You're all ears. I, I'd love to know. <laughs> well, there's a lot of biblical support, it turns out. There, there are apparently hundreds of Bible quotes that talk about money, and some of them can be spun some way, and some of them can be spun the other way. And you've called it the great big book of multiple choice, which mm. I, I enjoy. I call it the Rorschach test for the morally challenged. But, but uh, so, so here's some of the verses that they use to support the prosperity gospel. Uh, th this one's a, a big one, Malachi 3.10. Uh, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that, that there may be meat in my house and, and provide me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that, that there shall be no room enough to receive it. So it's this whole th thing of uh, bring, bring your money to God and you'll get a big payout. Um, let's see. Deuteronomy 29.9, carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. Uh, let's see, here's another one. Uh, Mark 11.24, therefore I tell you, whenever you ask for, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So there's actually a, a number of quotes like that. That's Jesus supposedly speaking. So there's quite a bit of... Uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, Bible quotes you can point out that, that support this idea. Of course, there's quite a number of Bible quotes that you can point out that support the opposite idea, but, you know, you can pick and choose whatever you want, right? Sure. So, and too bad there's no God to sort this thing out, you know. So, the, so we, got, we got clear evidence from the, those, um, those uh, uh, mortgage, what did you say, uh, the, um, the, the, the housing failure rates. Yes. I'm not using the right words. Uh, clear evidence that foreclosure rates, that's what I'm looking for. Yes. Um, that the foreclosure rates indicate that, well, no, the people in those areas are not, in fact, getting wealthier. But there is clearly also one party that is going to get wealthier. <laughs> and just one. Only one you know for sure. Right. And that would be the church. <laughs> right. <laughs> because they get to be the recipients of all these times. Are the largesse, right. Right, because you're, you're the, you know they're telling people that they're giving you're, they're giving to God, but there's no God to, to there, there's no hand of God coming down to grab That's the right. money. That's right. God does not carry <laughs> off the bags of loot. Right. They go into right. The, so it's almost the like the old coffers. days where there'd be some sort of sacrifice given, and then the monks or whatever would come and come and eat the sacrifice in the middle of the night and sure. you know party down whatever. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, so what are some of the implications of this? Uh, you know, this this uh, very interesting thing. I, you know, it, to me, it's a transparent con. You know, I, th I think, I think it's, if you if you understand how it works, you, you can kind of see how people are being conned. Uh, yeah. that people people's desperation are being played on. Um, uh, so the money is going to the con artists instead of instead of charity. So, so that's another very frustrating thing to me. Is is here we are giving tax breaks to these organizations. Uh, uh, with the idea that supposedly they're charities or charitable, right? There, there's at least that implication in there, but <laughs> but in 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 reality, what it is 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 uh, you know people you know getting as much money as they can. That can we let's be as fair as possible here? Do okay. we know that the churches aren't taking any of that money and using it for charitable purposes? Um, 
It turns out that uh, a number of these ministers are being investigated on their um, largesse okay. and, and um, whether or not they are uh, taking un, un um, what's the word, uh, uncalled for money out of these charities. And, uh -huh. and there's a senator, Senator Grassley, uh, has been probing the, the finances of these various folks. I guess there's been a number of complaints. I don't know the status of this. I think this is something that he was doing, has been doing for a number of years, and um, at least since 2007. Uh -huh. And I don't know the state of his investigation and these sorts of things, or whether there will be any change in the tax laws due to this, but, but I, hope, I hope there is. Yeah, but it's, it's difficult for anyone to know what a church does with its money because being tax exempt, they don't have to report. That's right, that's right. So, right. so yeah, that's so another it's, it's area a, it's where- It's a formula for abuse, even if there are cases where some of that, those dollars you know, go to feed the poor. That's right. Um, I guess we could that's right. go on a side subject of the, the strong evidence there is that in fact, um, money that goes to churches, uh, most of it does not reach the people it's supposed to be helping. Yes, yes. Uh, well, I don't and, have you know, those the, numbers The Catholic in front of me. pedophilia thing is another example. Is like oh, a lot of that money is going to, you know, hush the victims, right, and uh -huh. these sorts of things. Or now, or now pay, you know, lawsuits, and that's... Lawsuits, uh, right, that's another thing, or the spin doctoring. Uh, another problem with, with this uh, con setup is, you know, the faithful are being robbed. Um, you know they're they're being conned, and and Rick Warren, as it turns out, uh, to his credit, has has spoken against these these sorts of things, and he says, uh, "I can show you a million faithful followers of Christ who live in poverty. Why isn't everybody in the church a millionaire?" And he calls it baloney. So uh, you know, to his credit, I think he he has the right answer there. Well, except that you can, in fact, find these verses in the Bible that support it. So, <laughs> right. you know, it's just two dueling camps, each grabbing a different set of verses for their Right, for their, right. Uh, I've actually talked with a, a Christian friend about it, and, and it was this, the same sort of thing. It's like, well, God didn't mean it that way. And it's like, well, how do you know that? And like, right, because <laughs> that's how I interpret it. That's how I interpret it. Okay, so uh, another problem here is we get financial pressures for the believers, that people want to believe that they're blessed. They get sucked into this, this mantra of, of displays of wealth means that I'm blessed by God, and, and, I, and, and there's a lot of one-upsmanship in these sorts of environments. Mm -hmm. And so you end up with people who, um, who get uh, unrealistic expectations and who mismanage their money and these sorts of things. And, and this article, again, why did Christianity cause the crash, or did Christianity cause the crash by um, Hannah Rosen, is a very good article, very interesting article. I, I, I recommend and checking it And where did it appear? The Atlantic Monthly. Okay. And also uh, on a, the Atheist Experience blog, if you're a follower of that, I did a little post this morning that has a link to it. So you can check out that way. Hmm. And that, that blog is on our is 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 linked from our website. Um, well, and so there is this correlation between the prosperity gospel in certain communities and the high foreclosure rate. In fact, even uh -huh. some of the ministers got got into the the foreclosure or into the into the the subprime loan business uh -huh. by promoting this within their within their churches, which is uh -huh. kind of sad. Um, Another sort of implication is, is this, uh, this face-based uh, charity initiatives under Bush is based on a kind of a similar idea that, that if, you're, if you are poor and deserving or needing of government subsidy, then you must be poor in faith. The, the, the reason is, is that you um, don't believe in, 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 in God enough. Well, that, that would be the implication, yeah. Yeah, and, and there is, there is the, uh, you know, that was the, I think, original genesis of it with... Um, um, Marvin Olosky here in Austin, when he mm -hmm. was living here, actually created this idea of the faith, faith, faith charity and gave it to Bush when he was governor here, and it was tried out here in Texas years ago. And it's the same sort of thinking: is is that hey, these people are poor. If only they had God. If only they had these, you know, uh, people being ministered to mm -hmm. as well. Then then they wouldn't be poor anymore. And so there's this, there's this very uh, odd sort of conflict of interest going on with the churches here. Um, and that the poor non-believers are, are deserving of their situation. So anybody who's a non-believer is kind of screwed in this whole thing. So 
uh, let me wrap up here. Uh, okay. I, th I think the prosperity gospel is a good demonstration of how, cri how Christianity is, is evolving, uh, how there is no objective basis. There, there's nobody, nobody really running the show, as they claim. Uh, there's no God to fix these disagreements. It's a transparent scam. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be paying for it as taxpayers. And, uh, and it's sort of always been that way. It's just it's the new thing, and it's not going away anytime soon. I think, I think we're going to see this for years, mm. this prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. So did you have anything else you wanted to? No, no, that, okay. that was a good presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that was fun. We can take callers now. Let's, I know a lot of folks are anxious. Yes, we have a number of people that have uh, been on the line for a while. We'll start with David in Columbus, Ohio. David? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Wonderful. Fun talk about the uh, prosperity gospel. Unfortunately, I know nothing about that and uh, didn't call in to talk about that. That's all okay, right. That's what fine. do you got for us? Um, so there's a, William Lane Craig is one of the big time heavyweight champion apologists who's going to be coming to a univers university soon. Who is it? William Lane Craig. Oh, uh -huh. coming to Columbus? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So um, this has kind of sparked a lot of uh, conversation and stuff going on between a lot of people. And one thing that I've heard while talking to people is that. Um, at least from a Christian's perspective, it's unfortunate that there's no extra biblical evidence for Jesus. You guys, that's that's if you can if you can find Christians that will admit to that. It's not unfortunate um, for those who are going to just you know hand wave and give you a list of supposed sources that uh, in fact are no good if you look at them, but they believe they're good. Right. I'm kind of talking, you know. Uh, a lot of atheists have said that there aren't, there's no extra biblical evidence yeah. for Jesus. That's that, correct. That is correct. So this seems to be kind of an unfair point to me because the Bible and the New Testament specifically was, it's the amalgamation of information about Jesus. It's not like it's one single data point. It's, this, is, this is a collection of information that was about Jesus at the time. You know, treating, treating the New Testament like it's a single source, so if there had been like some, you know, arrest record or, or a Roman document about this Jesus guy and what a troublemaker he was and we got to do stuff to him, you think that would have made it into the Bible if they'd found it? Um, that doesn't seem very likely to me. Yeah, probably not, but in, 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 that's, kind of, that's kind of beyond the point. It's, it's, I'm saying that it's, it's not a single... You, you don't think it's odd that, uh, that this guy's doing miracles and raising the dead and doing all these things and, and nobody bothered to, to lift a pen and write about it? Well, no, what he's saying is, what he's, yeah, what, he's, what he's saying is, and that's a, that's a reasonable question, right? The, the Bible is a collection of multiple documents, so why doesn't that count, right? Mm -hmm. As it, it, the books that were left out would be extra biblical sources. That, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a good thing you could look at, right? What about the books that didn't make it? Right, like right, the like one. The, what's the crazy Judas gospel that? Oh, the gospel of Judas. That's a great one. Says I like that, that one. Says that it was suicide Jesus by cop. is some alien <laughs> from a planet. No, 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 no. The that gospel the of Judas is where, uh, where Judas is the hero, and Jesus is saying, um, "Hey, you know, I need you to help me shed these clothes. Will you do this for me?" Uh -huh. And meaning, meaning his body, right? Uh -huh. So, so it's really, uh, as, I, as I said, a suicide by cop, where where Judas is turning Jesus in so that he can be killed, yeah. and and that Jesus, as Judas is kind of the hero in the this I, particular I think, one. I think the point, though, about about uh, the lack of extra biblical sources, it's not uh, probably the. It would be worth um, mentioning that the the wording of that is not the best. The point is, there's no sources outside the the the. A group of believers. It's only believers who appear to have written about Jesus. And when I say believers, I mean followers, right? That's a good point. You don't, yeah. you don't, you don't hear about. Oh, I'm some traveler from Syria, and uh, I th thought it was all very crazy. But th there was this big crowd gathered, and there was this Jesus guy, and he was. They were saying he was doing miracles. There's none of that. The only people apparently who ever wrote about him were people who were already in the religion and already believed. That's the problem. Well, I wouldn't expect anyone else to write about it. I mean, that's... Really? Because nobody writes about anything that they saw unless they're a worshiper of it. That if, doesn't follow. If someone saw the, the miracles being, being performed by Jesus, I think they would become a believer. That would be... I, well, I'm not even talking... I am just mentioned a, uh, you know, some traveler, some foreign traveler who didn't see the miracles but just heard about them. 
There's no examples of contemporaries who just heard about Jesus and mentioned him. None. That's the problem. Well, most people, the documents they wrote, I don't think there'd be any reason to save those. I mean... To do what? To, to, to save them? them? I'm sure they were... It, things like that may exist, but and it's not like we have every single document ever written <laughs> from every single... You're right. There could be history. sealed away somewhere where nobody has ever seen it for 2,000 years. There could be saying, the proof. No, but until you find the proof, no it's not proof. It doesn't it, count if it hasn't been found. What's that? I'm, there's no reason to think that we would still have that. It's not like it's sealed away somewhere in some secret safe. I think that, you know, they <laughs> just don't last forever. Hey, dude, you know... Um, that we have all kinds of ancient documents about all kinds of things. If Jesus was, in fact, the big deal he's supposed to have been at the time, there would have been people who heard about that and wrote it down other than folks who were already in the cult. There would have. So the, the fact that doesn't exist is a big red flag. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I, well, I, I completely understand your point. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm. I guess I need more time to think about this and process it through. But all right. All right. Thanks again. Or yeah, thanks thanks for calling. Thanks, Just, David. I guess you didn't have anything. That's for fine. David. Thank you, David. Um, do I make him go away? I think away? he hit drop. Okay. okay. We're working. And uh, we will go now to Dan in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Dan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Thanks for waiting. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? I just want to say I'm a real big fan of you guys. I think what you guys are doing is great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, anyway, so I, uh, I'm an atheist, and um, I had some Jehovah's Witnesses come to my house the other day. Uh huh. And that's always you know, entertaining, I, isn't it? And I, you know, I entertain them and let them talk to me about what they believed and stuff. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, I'm studying chemistry, so my knowledge of thermodynamics and the Big Bang and physics is pretty good. So I mean, like, I used some of that to explain to them, to get, actually give them, you know, a crash course in, in, in physics on how the Big Bang works, well, because me, you know they obviously don't understand. You know well, what I mean? Let me guess what happened. They all kind of said uh huh and ran away. Yeah, well, they didn't. They haven't come back yet. I told them they can come back and talk to me whenever they wanted. You know what I mean? Because I, you know, I, I like debating these things with people. I feel that you know, they're, they're not fishing only for souls. It, you yeah. know, it helps my argument skills in this field, but it also lets them know that you know there are people who you can just come and talk to and think you can you know just persuade people to do whatever you want. You know, that they're smart people that will question what you think and and you know argue with you on things like that. So. Um, some of the questions I had for you guys is uh, the one thing that they asked me, which you know I couldn't really find a good answer to explain, which is what the purpose of life was. You know, they they, they said to me, you know, well, what's the purpose of life? And I, I I said, you know, to reproduce and to live. You know, that's in in the laws of of thermodynamics. You know, the way they're they they are, and they wanted to know why the purpose see, of those see, laws. See, it's were a loaded there. question. And, you know, I. It's a loaded question because for, for there to be a grand purpose, there has to be somebody for whom that purpose is meaningful, right? And I so the, it's, a, it's, uh -huh. a, it's a loaded question yeah. where it's, they're inferring that there's a God it's, to it's, whom the purpose matters. It's like, it's like them starting out by asking who created the universe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which, which yeah, makes yeah. it a question in, with an assumption that's their assumption, right? From the uh -huh. get-go, what they need to do is show that there is that, that there needs to be any purpose, you know. Yeah. That there's reasons why things are true. I mean, I could be walking down the street and see a rock in the side of the road, and I can wonder what is the reason why the ro that rock is there. And then we're talking about the history of all the forces that that moved that rock around and shaped yeah, it to its current shape. About, that's not what they're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. They are they are they are trying to. Uh, to shoehorn in the p assumption that there's somebody who would have a purpose, and you may have without you may have it. your own purpose for your own life and your own reasons for doing things, and that's perfectly fine, and that fits in that this notion of the purpose of the you know design or conscious conscious decision making, but but as as Jeff says, they're just trying to shoehorn shoehorn in a little spot for their god. <laughs> so so it's a tricky yeah. question. It's a, it's a subtle thing. And unless you know yeah. know to look for it, you could easily get tripped up by that. Okay, I, I understand what you mean. Um, yeah. And another thing I wanted to ask you guys is, um, well, I was talking to them, and I and I, I told them, you know, that I had read a couple of passages in the Bible in the Old Testament that actually preached genocide in the Old Testament, 
like such as like Deuteronomy and oh, stuff sure. like that. Oh, now, sure. The flood. I've heard that there are a lot of passages that preach this kind of stuff, and I'm just curious. Like, is there really an overwhelming amount? Oh my gosh, yes. The, um, I I don't. I'm just realizing I haven't hosted the show in years. I have a big notebook of useful tidbits of info that I've gathered, and one is a complete listing of all of the deaths in the Bible that were either committed, all the killings that were committed either by God directly or, okay. or in response to his supposed command. And, you, and, and it's, you did a show on this. It's not yes. just in your notebook. You yes. did a show, well, and you can look in our archives for that show. Is it up there somewhere? Yes, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yes, there's, I mean, it's, it's in the multiple millions. Okay. When of course, you, you have you, to estimate a lot of it, but, but yeah. That's pretty overwhelming. <laughs> that, oh, that's, that's in multiple millions, not even counter, uh, counting things like, and they destroyed this entire city and killed everyone in it without seeing fit to tell you how many people that was. It's <laughs> yeah. still in the multiple millions. So, wow. that's, that's pretty yeah, intense. there's a lot yeah, of that I mean, in the Old I Testament. Said that, I mean, the, uh, they just, their face is totally like went blank and I, and I mean uh, they had a King James Bible with them but that's not the Old Testament and I said you know uh, you know, King I James has Old Testament and print some of the Old Testament scriptures up that said that from Deuteronomy, and you know they they weren't really interested in having me do that. You know, well, a, so. yeah, a lot of a lot of Christians don't aren't familiar with the Bible very very well, and they and they they've been led down the rosy path uh, of all the you know joy and wonder bread uh, that's there, and and they they they're not even aware of these passages, and often you can really surprise them by saying, hey, look at this, and here's you know God ordering this thing, and and. Of course, then then you get into the rationalizations like, oh well, they were they were wicked, or they deserved it, or they blah blah right. blah, and that that's kind of a, a little yeah, rem rabbit hole. Ultimately, when you corner <laughs> them, they may well resort to, well, you know, we we believe that God made up the rules of right and wrong, so he anything that he did does is automatically right because he says so. Therefore, those killings don't count because they deserved it. Well, can I ask you a question? Well, if like if if God orders people to kill, and then He says, you know, in His commandments that thou shalt not kill, isn't that kind of like telling people to do as I say and not as I do? Absolutely, it, it is. But also, that's why they call him the divine lawgiver. You know, okay. if they if they called him a divine law follower, then you could <laughs> then you could catch him, right? Then you could yeah. say, no, he did this thing here and that thing there. Yeah, there's as soon a lot as of he's escapes. a guy who's the source of the rules. Yeah. That uh -huh. makes him the guy who could break him at any That's time. Right. He, he puts you in this world, he can take you out. And, and, <laughs> and if you corner a lot of Christians, they will fall back to that. Yeah. That, you know, okay. morality doesn't count when it's God doing the, the immoral thing. But, 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 but the because gist of by this definition, is, anything he does is right. But, but the gist of this is, is anybody that buys into this stuff has got their moral compass spinning in all sorts of different directions. Right? It's, 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 it's just so much clearer if you put this thing aside. Yeah. And, yeah. and say, you know, would I want to have someone kill me? No. Well, maybe I shouldn't kill them. <laughs> right. Do I want to live in a society right. where people are killing each other? Do I want to live in a society where people don't kill each other? It's pretty simple stuff, right? Yeah, no, I understand <laughs> completely. And uh, my, my last thing I really wanted to ask you guys is uh, next time they, is there a better approach I can take the next time they come here to, to you know what I mean, like totally be able to... Uh, you know, fend off anything they say to me. I know, I know you guys are very good at arguing with people. On, so is there anything I could... Uh... It's not a question of approach. It's a question of knowing stuff. Okay. That's true. Uh, That's knowing true. stuff and also, you know, having a good bullshit detector. Yeah. Because exactly. just anything they tell you, recast it as, a, as, a, as fair an analogy as you can make in your head. Run that, okay. run your mind through that and, and you know, ask yourself... This thing they're telling me, this kind of assumption they're asking me to make, would that be reasonable and fair in any other circumstances? And if the answer is no, you've got them, and you tell them so. Okay. That's well, what I do. Well, let me throw out another thing, too. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in Jehovah's Witnesses in particular, you might go look at and study up on all the different predictions they've made that the end of the world is going to happen and that have been wrong. And you might okay. you might make a little list of those and point those out, and and then you can also look up. There's a passage in the Bible about uh, preaching false religion and uh, uh. false doctrine, 
and uh, and you can kind of put those two together and, and <laughs> watch their little <laughs> brains ask, ask them uh, whether whether they accept the punishment for preaching false religion. Anyway, so that would be one thing I'd maybe throw out for fun. Okay, okay. Dan. But that'll right, well, pretty much guarantee they much won't for come back. My call. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay. You're welcome, Dan. Have Thanks fun. Have fun. On. Good luck to you, sir. I hey. should I should add that that uh, you know it, for people who who have never debated with theists, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's hard. It, it's it's hard because um, the the theists don't uh, logical arguments don't don't are not generally accepted by by theists. They're 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 locked into this emotional thing and it's very hard to convince a theist of, of anything that goes against what they believe and what and those doctrine but it's a good exercise I think for people to uh, for for atheists uh, to to go through these arguments and learn these things and understand them because it it helps you critically think and there are there are lots of good reasons there, there's reasons why we do this sort of show we we're, we're, we're doing the show for the fence setters we're doing the show for people who haven't made up their mind yeah. we're educating people and those are the those are the sorts of people that we're really trying to reach, I think. And those are also not the sorts of people who tend to come door to door. Right. So right. if there's ever been a case of a of a you know door to door religion salesman getting uh, disabused of their religion by some atheist whose door they come to, right, and going away a non-believer. If that's ever happened, I'd sure love to hear of it. Oh, that'd be a great story. As far as I, I've never, well, I have never heard of such a thing. I suppose it's remotely possible. And it's not it's, because we aren't right. It's just because it, it takes a long time, I think, to, to unlearn all this baggage and get rid of all this baggage. And it's not an epiphany sort of thing at all. But one, one word of caution. I've heard a lot from believers about encounters they've had with uh, non-believers who did not know their stuff, who did not argue well, who um, you know passed on hearsay that could easily be disproved, right? Who did a bad job, who resulted in that believer going away more certain that they were right. Yep. So be careful. Yep. Okay. Should we go on? Yeah. We got Timothy in Gainesville, Florida. Timothy, are you there? Oh, hello, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Thanks for waiting. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm a big fan of your show and everything. Um, it's the first time calling in. Good. I wanted to say, like, on the, the topic of um, the, the prosperity gospel, it seems very um, similar to a, a type of scam that's been going on the Internet for, like, the past decade or so. It's the, the Nigerian 419 scam. Are yes. you familiar with it? Oh, absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's called an advanced fee fraud. Yeah. Let me let me let me just brief the 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 the, uh, the viewers what what this is 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 it's basically uh, it, you see these in emails all the time that there's this big pot of money uh, I'm I'm some dignitary in, uh, in if you, you apparently have your um, uh, Skype or some sort of feedback going so if you can look into that please do okay yeah I'm Skype <laughs> okay so. Uh, so this advanced fee thing is there's this big pot of money and I trust you and you're going to invest it for me and you're going to have it in your hands soon. We just need to to get some fun, financial information from you, some some or, or some. Uh, there's been a snag. There's going to be we're going to need some money to to release the, this and and it's kind of nickels and dimes uh, holding this bait out of this million dollars or ten million dollars or whatever. Right. And and that's the scam. Is that there's never a payout. Uh, and I guess that's. That's true with this. Is, is there's no, not necessarily a payout? I mean, if it, if you in the prosperity gospel, if you if you get a payout from somehow that God's going to steal credit for it, or they're going to steal credit, <laughs> but it, it's not necessarily going to be because of because of your tithing. Yeah, though so, it is. It is also very common for those uh, Nigerian scam letters to be couched in religious language. Right oh, yeah. to say, well, I, you know, I'm a preacher in this country, oh, or I'm this good Christian angles. woman in this country, and yeah. there's a reason for that too, and that's called affinity fraud. That is fraud where the uh, the victim is manipulated by the idea that, oh, this person who I'm talking to is part of the same group as me. In this case, it would be religion, right? That's why I can trust them. Yeah, there's all sorts of mechanisms. There's oh, you have to keep it quiet because of this and that, or, or I trust you, and and um, therefore you know you're a special person. It's playing. That's sure. related to what you were saying. So there's there's a lot of variations. I get about five of these a day. <laughs> Seriously, I get. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's some hilarious websites up there where people have responded to them. Like some guy wrote back and identified himself as Colonel Sanders <laughs> oh, yeah, like from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Chicken. And oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Just yeah, the, the, yeah, there is the are... lengths to which those scammers are willing to go to like fool themselves into believing they've still got you on the hook is is pretty amazing. I, yeah, I've heard of cases where where somebody who really knew what they were doing were able to scam the scammers. Yes, and get like a little <laughs> a little tiny plastic bag with some gold dust in it or something to prove that it was all true. So anyway, yeah, scams. Anything else, Timothy? No, nope, that's that's pretty much it. Thanks yeah. for calling, man. Yep, you too. Have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. You too. Uh, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. Wow, people really want to talk that about your topic good. today. Well, good. Done. Uh, now we have Stephen in Hampton, Virginia. Stephen? Hey, you there? guys. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well. Um, I just wanted to share you a story with you guys about um, the prosperity gospel, if I could. Oh, okay. that'd be great. First hand, the yeah. stuff is great. Yeah. Uh, my sister is a Christian. She goes to a non-denominational church. And they do this whole thing of, um, you know, this prosperity thing where they give to the church, um, they give their time, give their money, and they wait for their blessings. And um, it's pretty funny because I'm uh, an atheist and, you know, never stepped into a church once, and I've been so, uh, I guess I could use the word, blessed. Uh, I got a house, got a great job. Um, but her which, family... Which you, which you work for, her. right? Sorry? Which you work for, honestly, right? Yeah, yeah, I work hard for Okay, it, yeah. that's a good thing to mention. <laughs> well, but, but the, let's be fair, and I, I don't want to give people the wrong impression of how to live their lives. Uh, I have experienced a number of incredible lucky breaks in my life, and I'm also an atheist, so <laughs> okay. uh, I think that, that may actually well, sometimes be you create even... your own luck, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, so go on, uh, go on, Steve. It's funny that... Um, she is so like her and her family are so you know devoted into giving their time and money and they've had the worst luck for years they're they were losing jobs they have no money they you know they couldn't get a house they wanted it's just one bad thing on top of the next mm -hmm. and i'm like they've tried to convert me so many times i'm like why would i want to give myself to a god that is not going to help me out when i have all these great things and uh you know, I don't need God's help. And they say, well, that's Satan. You know, that's Satan blocking God. Satan's showing you uh, <laughs> that you can live your life the way you want it. And he is, uh, you want to use the word blessed, Satan is blessing you or cursing you, you know, whatever. Hey, but um, if, the, if the motivation for worshiping of, uh, some dude is how much stuff he'll give you, then, you know, the, Satan apparently is the one who's coming through. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, Good for him, right? He's, he's, he's got more evidence going for him than God. To, to touch on a tangent here, uh, often um, the ministers hold themselves up as, as the one you should look at. And the ministers are the ones with the Mercedes and, and the, the, the million, the multi-million dollar houses and flying around in uh -huh. jets and these sorts of things. And, and yeah. so uh, you're not supposed to look under the hood. You're not supposed to look at the, the, the common people who are, who are ta being taken by the scam. You're supposed to look at the, the scammers. And, and yet, as we said, you know, the minister is the one who is receiving all these regular tithes. Right. You know, the most right. people can it's working bring for themselves him. To, to part with. Anyway. Well, yeah. So, so you don't you don't think it's a good idea? Um, I mean, if they think they're going to get eternal life afterwards and you know give up their money, but of course not, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling, Stephen. All right. Thank you. Thanks for thank the story you. and good luck yeah. to you. Uh, more good luck to you. <laughs> uh, now we've got Ali in Chicago, Illinois. Ali, you there? Hey, how you guys doing? Am I saying that right, Ali? I'll Ali, it's how actually Ali, but it's okay, Ali, don't worry. thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome. What can we do for you? Uh, yeah, I, just, I wanted to talk about um, something that was actually mentioned on a previous show of yours, uh -huh. and in regards to how moderates cover for fanatics, and just kind of give you back information of what I'm talking about. Um, uh, when I was watching this show, uh, Jeff, you said on episode 34 that um, beliefs have implications, and that was like the 10 minute 40 second mark, and then. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, Matt, yeah, uh, but we, we're, <laughs> not, we're not going to know those Matt things. But. As stated 
um, at 1634 that I don't consider them the moderate believers to be any great harm, with the exception of the fact that they provide cover for those who do harm by using the same labels, the same holy books, and the same uh, and, and all such a thing. So, mm -hmm. what I wanted to ask you, I'm sorry, am I interrupting? My no, no, please go. No, on. yeah, we're listening. I'm, ag I'm agreeing that. with with the sentiments. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah, what I wanted to ask you actually was. Um, and I understand this is sort of the motivation to also kind of going against moderate believers. Um, wouldn't it be better to actually support the moderate believers against the extremists? Because this sort of argument can be equally applied to non-religious views. Uh, for instance, if, if you don't mind giving some examples, uh, the fact that even though evolution is true, um, the fact that it's true it has also made it the fact that people have misinterpreted it. And, you know, social Darwinist used it for ill means. Uh, for instance, uh, Hitler using Nietzsche's writings. Um, as some sort of uh, justification for some of his ideas. Mm -hmm. So couldn't we equally apply this to factual, what you consider very factual uh, beliefs? Well, um, uh, n I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to argue that people holding factual beliefs are at fault for people misusing factual beliefs because we've got to, you know, it, we need to be holding on to factual beliefs. And in that case, I mean, people misusing them are a problem, but the problem's not going to be solved by everybody ab abandoning the facts, right? See what I'm saying? The, the cost is too high. Now, when we're talking about non-factual beliefs, abandoning non-factual beliefs in order to reduce the amount of abuse of those non-factual beliefs, the cost is zero. See, I don't, I don't, but, um, but no, I'm not cost. I, just, I just think that it's, it's the factualness or the, the, uh, what you call the mythological aspect of, of the belief itself doesn't seem to me to have any, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't seem to have any, uh, to make any difference in that sense because, uh, what I'm trying to say is for your, for the purposes of your cause, you know, for, you know, getting rid of the fanatics, uh, it would seem better to work with the moderates, even though you may not agree with all their, you know, views on God, et cetera. Well, because okay. even if you get rid of all the moderate beliefs, it's okay, not well, necessarily going to make sure that the fanatics are going to go yeah, away. I, I mean, they may okay. just be, uh, for all intents and purposes, they may just be more um, influenced to, to be fanatical because of what they see you're trying to do. Okay. Well, I was just going to say, you know, one of the, one of the difficulties there is that the the fanatics, the fundamentalists, generally have scripture on their side. They can generally point to the Bible verses that say, you know, God really wants this, uh, and they gen they generally know their Bible pretty well. Um, the the moderates uh, really don't have a leg to stand on because because they're on such flimsy ground. You know, they're kind of taking bits and pieces of the religion and ignoring a lot of the rest of it. They're on shaky ground. They really can't win any arguments with the, the fundamentalists. They're, they're, in a, they're in a bad situation that way. Uh, in, in a sense, the, the atheists are the only ones who, who have the ability to argue against them by, by escaping the, the whole biblical worldview in, in order to, to get at the right answer. You know, we, can, we have the evidence uh, on our side and these sorts of things. The purpose of our show is is to reach out to people who may be fence sitting or whatever, but they may or may not be religious moderates. A lot of religious moderates have, are pretty close-minded to, you know, uh, uh, ideas that, that counter their re religious beliefs. So I I don't know that we can reach those people, and I don't know that they can help win against the fundamentalists because they they don't have the scriptural basis to do it. Uh, they'd have to they'd have to pretty much come to our side i think completely and that's a tough row to hoe uh, I, mean, I could see your, your perspective there um of course i would disagree to some extent because you know i think that uh once people kind of learn more about their traditions they tend to be uh less um, uh, fanatic but they, of course you, uh, we have a disagreement there i, I know that but um also, uh, the reason I also brought this subject up was uh, previously, uh, Don, you had stated that variations in beliefs kind of show the evolution of religious views, mm -hmm. and um, and also how there's not so some sort of objective monolithic, you know, structure. And um, what I want to say was also, can't this equally be applied um, to, you know, political theories? Um, I mean, should we get rid of those things as well because there are. Uh, we should get rid of politics altogether because there's variations of. Uh, in, in, uh, in those cases, nobody's claiming that there's a God there, you know, an all-powerful, all-knowing God that that is perfect, right? 
It's only the religions that's making those sorts of claims. So, so absolutely, you know, politics is, is a human endeavor, and there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be going up blind alleys. There's going to be things that, 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 that happen bad. Hopefully, we can learn from them and move on. But, but religion, religion, and especially you know, monotheistic religions, where you're where you're saying there is there's one God we're following, you know, you that's you have to hold those folks, I think, to a higher standard, in that you know if they can communicate to that God, and, and this God is the author of morality and these sorts of things, then by gosh, there should be some higher level of behavior. You should you should have a lot more continuity, a lot more, you know, focus of of effort. Because all these people uh, want to talk to that God and want to please that God, and why why aren't they all behaving the same way? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the point that I was trying to get at there. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I just wanted to call in and ask those questions and just kind of have like a small discussion. I don't have much time, but it's okay if I call you guys maybe next week. You uh, can you sure. can call in every single week as long as you got a good question and some something something interesting to talk about. Okay. So, really by all means. Thank you so much. All right, Holly. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye bye. Good luck to you. And, uh, yeah, I want to, oh, gosh, see, I've hung up on him. And I, um, you, oh, you. I have one more point to make of his question about uh, working with the moderates. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, I'm sure you, you know, you when, went away in there, too. Uh, I think he brought up the example of uh, Darwinism and the, mis, uh, the misuse of Darwinism, uh, of, uh, say, uh, let's say he meant social Darwinism, right? Um, I think he was talking about... Uh, the idea that uh, we don't want to alienate religious believers on the topic of evolution because a lot of religious believers who are moderates believe in evolution and they could be an ally in, in, in you know, well, getting it taught properly. I okay, think that's where he was okay, going. Okay, no, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to say um, as long as you believe true thing A, I will therefore shut up about your your belief in untrue thing B. That's not how it works. If that's yeah. what he meant. Yeah, most most atheists don't don't buy but into I that idea. You know, a lot of scientists do. They they think well, you know, maybe maybe we should maybe we should you know make some incremental progress here where we're teaching there are people teaching science. That. You have people that argue that most atheists don't buy into that. Most atheists are kind of you know let's get at the real truth but, and let's not. Let's but as but as allies as allies against the fanatics, right? Here's there's the, what, what I want to get mm -hmm. at, right? Um, I don't see moderate religionists going after uh, religious extremists. I don't see it. And the reason I don't see it is because of that old uh, that old saw: um, people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> there's very little that a moderate believer can say. About uh, you know about why a a fanatical believer is wrong, other than well I think you're just you know misinterpreting it and being mean. What is what is ultimately said? What the 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 what's in the holy book is the same for both groups. That makes it very very difficult for them. Nor do I see moderates going back and saying hey you know what these passages in the Bible. Getting back to your your. Uh, uh, talk today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These passages in the Bible saying that, oh yeah, you know, God will give you money if you, if you kowtow to him, right? Those passages are causing trouble, therefore us moderates are going to get rid of them. <laughs> I don't see That'll that never happening. Happen. <laughs> I don't see that happening. I see basically no evidence. Now, there are, <laughs> there are extreme cases, like um, I happen to know in the little bit of research I did to prepare myself for your talk today, mm -hmm. uh, there, I also found a list of uh, major evangelists who oppose the whole um, prosperity gospel thing. There are some, right? And I'm glad they're opposing that. But that gets us back to this question of, well, am I then going to stop arguing with them, stop exposing what I think are the things that those, those guys believe that I think are not true? Am I going to stop talking about that because I think they'll stop being against this other thing that's bad? No. Not no, I won't. That's just not. That's not how. That's well, not we how. Can, we can knowledge encourage works. them in a limited way. It, the progress right. of human knowledge is not about you know playing a little game with. Okay, we'll allow you to believe this untrue thing and shut up about about how silly we think that is. As long as you'll uh, join with us in opposing this other untrue thing, doesn't work that way. 
Well, politics uh, works that way, but d well, atheism doesn't that, very much. It's not, not atheism, it's, <laughs> it's knowledge. Yeah, right. Yeah, a thing right. is either true or it's not. Bottom That's right. line. Yeah, we're, we subscribe to more of the scientific idea of, yeah. you know, let's test this, and if it's true, it's yeah. true. If it's not, it's not. We have Joe Zemecki on line three. Joe calling from Austin. How you doing, Joe? Hey, I'm doing great. Awesome. Alan, Jeff, great to see you on TV again. Good to see you. Thank you. What's up? Well, I wanted to talk about your topic, prosperity, evangelism, I guess I would call it. But also, your last caller brought up something I wanted to mention. Uh-huh. I'm one of those atheist activists who many Christians have asked to do just that, to just appeal to the moderate Christians out there in a friendly way and try to build bridges so that we can both focus on going after the fundamentalists and their crazy tactics. And uh, one thing I always respond with is by saying the fundamentalists are, like you said, a little more honest to their, to their Bible. Oh, that's their another good point. But Ultimately, also, the arguments are on their side. <laughs> right. But also, the moderate Christians out there, who seem to be the majority of Christians, they actually enable the fundamentalists and their tactics by not going after them or focusing on them like we would, but also by simply going to those same churches and tithing, and especially with the Catholic Church, when it comes to the sex scandals. I believe that there's so much sex scandal going on at the Catholic Church around the world that every church member who goes there and... Uh, shows their support without criticism, without questioning, and then puts the money in the plate. Certainly it's helping enable the fundamentalists who run that cult, and they cause more harm. But it's hard for me as an atheist activist to want to go to moderate Christians because they're also the ones sometimes who turn to me and say things like, look, I'm not a fundamentalist Christian, don't get me wrong, but where do you get your morals, and why are you <laughs> lecturing me when you're the one with the problem? You you have right. a psychological problem. Do you hate your father? Things like that, right? And so, yeah, a lot of the I, same problems are present in both camps. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Of course, and when we see Fred Phelps and the God Hates Fags Church in Topeka, Kansas, when they talk about how much God hates gays, and then we see the counter-protesters, who are mostly Christian, and they hold signs up against the Fred Phelps gang, the Westboro Baptist Church, and they're saying things like, God actually loves gays. It's almost laughable for us to look at one side versus the other and say, who's the fundamentalist here? Because, I mean, it's in black and white. I've met so many Christians. I've met Sunday school teachers who readily and gladly admit they've never read the entire Bible. And it's jaw-dropping to hear how they really want their religion to be the official government religion of our society, but they haven't researched it half as much as your average atheist, and not even an atheist activist. Anyway, I just had to say that, and the prosperity part, Jesus was a pauper. I made a video about this where so many megachurches exist all over our country, and rich people driving their BMWs and Mercedes and Audis, to sit for an hour and worship a pauper. Now, where's the sense in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. he was like the, the prosperity ministers in that he was sort of living off the fat of the land. He was, he was taking, taking, <laughs> you know, taking money where he could get it. So. He was probably collecting at times. <laughs> Somebody asked him. Well, yeah. It's always, uh, Supposedly it's always he was a carpenter, but I you're right, Joe. Anything. I mean, I, I got, uh, uh, to be as fair as absolutely possible, I I do think we can cut, um, like Catholics you were talking about, right? I do think we can ca cut some Catholics some slack for remaining Catholics even though um, it's looking really bad for the, um, the leadership of the organization. In the same way that I personally was not a big supporter of our previous president, but I paid my taxes while that guy was in office. There is a sense in which you know, okay, fine, sure, you guys want to stick with the organization even though um, uh, they are apparently misbehaving in certain ways. But you would like, I, you know, I would like to see um, at least some public outcry from them about this. And I guess there is a little, right? I mean, there, there are people who, are, who uh, protest the, uh, the child abuses that have occurred uh, all over the world, and you know they they sue the church and stuff. There there's some of that. Yeah, but they still seem to be very 
deferent to to yeah. the it would the be clergy. nice it would be nice to see them you know wake Instead up and go hey you know these guys just because they got the special hats and the special frocks that doesn't mean they are actually um, good people but yeah. anyway so thanks well, for calling man yes and I will continue watching thanks y'all have a great day thanks Jim. thank you Joe all right yeah, you Joe's a long-time uh, member of, ACA in member fact, of uh, as I recall, instrumental in there even being this TV show. Yeah, yeah. Do Definitely. I want to what? Well, hey, uh, after dinner or after the show, let's go to Threadgills. Oh, right, I'm supposed to plug Threadgills. Um, at, uh, the show ends at 6 o'clock, and uh, roughly 6.30 we have um, the crew and other members of the ACA and supporters. We've got and, uh, and seven or so people here in the audience that will be joining us, I think. Yeah, at Threadgills, that's the Threadgills at 301 West Riverside Drive at roughly 6.30. Uh, at the desk, just uh, say you want to sit with the atheists. They know where we are. Yeah, we're, we're well-known. There. Do you want to do your little news story on the? Oh, yeah, I guess this has come up a couple of times. Um, so, in case uh, uh, people aren't pay paying attention in the media, or the media is not paying attention, there is the latest development in the um, in the uh, scandal with the current Pope of the Catholic Church uh, being found to have been complicit in the cover up of child sexual abuse by priests. While he was a cardinal. What, before he was the the pope, right? Yeah. But while he was a cardinal, he um, he was. It, um, uh, I could read the letter. the The letter is an, it, it is translated from whatever language it was originally written in, and it's very flowery. And you're not going to find the words, "Hey guys, we got to hide this because we want to be able to keep on, you know, raping little children, and so we can't let this get out." I mean, there's no admission like that, and I don't think anybody thinks that inside the Catholic Church there's that exact attitude. What there is apparently is an attitude that the survival and reputation of the church is more important than, um, than, getting, than, than preserving the safety of children in their care. Uh, the relevant section is, um, let's see. This court, although it regards the arguments presented in favor of removal in this case to be of grave significance, nevertheless deems it necessary to consider the good of the universal church together with that of the petitioner, and it is also unable to make light of the detriment that grant granting the dispensation can promoke, prom uh, provoke with the community of Christ's faithful. Um, I'm not sure even exactly how to interpret that. Bottom line, the, the, this letter said, oh, you want to kick out this, this uh, exposed child molesting priest? No, let's think about this a little bit more because that could be bad for the church. <laughs> uh, on a side note, there is an effort underway to have the Pope arrested when he visits the, uh, the United Kingdom. Um, I think it's later this month. Um, so in the U.S., he's claimed uh, uh, diplomatic immunity from and, any sort of uh, and, involvement in this sort of and thing. And these lawyers say, um, this is one of the lawyers, a, one of the two lawyers of, talking. Head of some state. He says there is every possibility of legal action against the Pope occurring. Uh, we have come to the view that the Vatican is not actually a state under international law. It is not recognized by the UN. It does not have borders that are policed, and its relations are not of a full diplomatic uh, nature. The U.S. got it wrong. So the, these lawyers in Britain are arguing that, no, Pope's just a guy, and he, and, uh, he is under suspicion of being compl uh, uh, complicit in crimes, and if he comes to our shores, we're going to try to get him arrested. That will be an interesting thing to watch the development of. Uh, in fact, we have Calvin from England. He might have a comment about this. Calvin, are you there? Hello, yes. Hi, thanks um, for calling. Yes, I uh, love the show, by the way. Thank you. All the way over here, it's great. Um, well, I didn't know the Pope's coming over here, but um, if he does, I certainly hope we do arrest him. It'll be quite funny. <laughs> Funny. We hope you do, because <laughs> yeah, that's why that's reasonably why we have legal systems in our respective nations because right. they're hilarious. Yeah, well, rule of law and all that good stuff. <laughs> right. 
Oh, what's Richie calling about? Um, do you remember the caller a couple of times ago, Ali, I think yeah. his name was? Yeah. Uh, he was saying that um, some Christians like to go where uh, evolution inspired Adolf Hitler to uh, commit genocide and like, kill Jews and master race and all that sort there, of stuff. There, there is that claim, and I, I don't buy it, but there is that claim, yes. Well, what I was getting at was evolution happens, but it's how you use something that happens. So take a knife. You know, you can use that to carve chicken or you can use it to kill someone. doesn't mean that we should uh, not teach how to make knives. Right. Uh, right. And that was, that was kind of my point to, to Ali that, uh, uh, though I'm not, um, this gets stickier if we want to talk about, say, guns in free access to like high powered automatic weapons yeah, not, <laughs> right not, not, those are those physically better, exist better, too better those topic. physically exist too but you know when the uh, my point is when the cost is well you give up some beliefs that aren't true in order to prevent the misuse of those beliefs cost is way lower than when you say you know um, somebody might stub their toe on a uh, doorstop, therefore we're going to have a law that says we can't have doorstops. They're com those are two completely different cases. Yeah, I would agree, because, um, well, there's no point saying you shouldn't teach evolution just because it can be used for bad. It can also be used for a lot of good. And, and if you're going to, you know, with evolution, the, it, it, you know, those people that, that argued for, um, uh, for, oh God, now I've forgotten the term, um, uh, tried to apply evolution to uh, society. Right. Social Darwinism, hmm? Social Darwinism thank you. Uh, you know, those people are wrong. They're demonstrably factually wrong in what is implied by the theory of evolution, and that can be argued on that basis. But when it's two groups of people with a great big book of multiple choice that is the foundation of both religious groups' beliefs, right, there's no real argument you can make that either side is right. It's all going to come down to their personal interpretations. Or you know? some sort of, uh, of course, argument sides, by popularity or both something. Both sides yeah. believe that their interpretation is the right one, but there's no way to actually you know, you know, demonstrably prove that. Where there is with things like you know, um, you know, how evolution works. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah, I thought his, I thought his, his um, analogy was very poor. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much. Um, enjoyed chatting. I keep watching the show, and cheers. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you, you for calling. See if you can find out about that, uh, that, uh, that um, um, attempt to get the Pope arrested. I'll uh, write to my uh, local MP and uh, give him a suggestion. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks for calling, Calvin. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> Bye. Okay. How are we doing on time? All right. Uh, we've got... Dylan in Morgantown, North Carolina. Hi, Dylan. Uh, hi. I was wanting to ask you guys how you deal with the people who are telling you to back off and uh, just to let them believe what they want to, because I've had a lot of trouble with those people. You've had a lot of pe uh, people telling you to back off? Yeah, and to just say, uh, why, don't, why don't you just let me believe whatever it is I want to? The reason is because the people that believe those things want to uh, get their way in government and they want to get their way in law. And uh, we've got examples in other countries of what happens when the religious powers get control of government and the law. And that needs to be fought if we don't want that to happen here. And there's a more subtle thing too, and that is beliefs, beliefs inform actions. So if you hold something that you, if you believe something that's not true, you can't help but act on that eventually. And those actions add up to things that uh, are not going to be good for society or good for that individual in the long run. It's a tougher, tougher argument to make. Um, but as far as you know, y y you being told to back off, I, I have to ask sort of, are you, are you kind of a, an evangelical atheist, or are you going after people? Are you, uh, are you, no, you know, rubbing people's nose? Going after people, per se. Okay. But, I, ha uh, I had to ask. Argument. So, so what, can you give me the context of this, this sort of situation? Are you, are you, are you lacking social graces for, for, for this particular thing? Or, or are, you, are you just being honest with how you feel and, and, uh, and challenging people on when issues come up? 
Uh, yeah, I was just being honest with uh, yeah. how people and these issues come up, and really I was just wondering how you guys deal with that, okay? It was a matter of curiosity. And also I've got a couple other questions for you as well, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, before uh, so you get to one, that, one, I have one more comment about your first thing. I mean, there is such right. a thing as being a jerk about being an atheist, right? Just, well, beca of course, yeah. just because you think that, I mean, everybody likes to be right because um, being right or be thinking that you are right is a very heady experience and it can make you feel really good about yourself. Uh, the important thing, though, is to really be right um, and, uh, and then even then, there's such a thing as being a jerk about it. So and we're not accusing you, by the way. We're right. just, we're just. But, but that line, that that line that you could cross between just, you know, being very uh, concerned about the difference between fact and fantasy, and the other side of the line where you're just being a jerk, is not in the place where most believers think it is. They think that that line is right as soon as you open your mouth. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. And that's not no, true. That's true. So, yeah, uh, by all means, exert your, exert, uh, you know, use your First Amendment rights, uh, make, make points, uh, be educated, these sorts of things, that go for it. Um, you know, we all have different styles. Um, <laughs> Jeff has one style, I have a different style. Yeah. Everybody in the ACA has got, you know, even, even all our public figures. So that, that's part of the reason why we have so many co-hosts on this show is because mm -hmm. we do have different styles and different viewpoints and these sorts of things. And, and yours is just as valid. So go for it. So what else did you have there, Dylan? Um, also, this was a question somebody else wanted me to ask. Um, in your experience, what has caused a person you know to deconvert? As in, uh, what's most effective, emotional appeal, uh, logic, etc. What, what do you think causes people to deconvert? I can take this. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You, you might want to take a look at the testimonials area of the ACA website. There's about 10 or so people who have who've told their story about this is, this is how I came to atheism, and nearly all of them are uh, certainly, of all the ones that came from somewhere, like some belief, nearly all of them said, you know, I, I started having doubts, I started make, asking questions, and over many, many years, often something like 10 years, I came to reject it all, and I'm, I'm happy and free now. Uh, and, it, and it's a long process. It's, not, it's never uh, an epiphany thing. You know, if, if we have anybody writing the show saying, hey, you made me an atheist, it was really because they were, they were pretty close to being an atheist to begin with. It's a long process. And it's very much an intellectual process, I would say. Right. So that, that wow. would be. Uh, well, that was all I wanted. OK, okay Dylan. Thanks for calling, right. man. Thanks. Good luck to you, sir. Right, bye. And we'll go to Leo in the UK. All right. Leo, you there? Yeah, hi. Uh, how hi, are Leo. You doing? Good. Good. What time is it there? Um, almost midnight. Okay. Thanks for staying up with us. <laughs> oh, no problem. You okay. Um, but, yeah, uh, Jeff, um, I, I had a, a comment to you saying that the Catholics. Uh, needed a, a, a break, as it were, because they don't necessarily um, all have elected the Pope, or the Pope isn't necessarily responsible for all of them. Uh, I wanted to make this distinction between the Catholic Church and, say, any other Protestant belief that, that doesn't recognize the organization as uh, a, an intrinsic part of the belief, whereas uh, the, the thing that separates Catholics is that they, they believe that the Pope is, is divinely mandated through apostolic succession. In other words, from the first apostle to now, there has been an unbroken chain. It has been selected and chosen by God. The Holy Spirit sits on the bishops as they nominate the Pope. So this is a, a selection by God for who is the person who will actually um, run and, and, and lead the, the church into the next generation. And anyone who follows that, uh, the, the, the Catholic belief, accepts the Pope, I think, as the person who would actually lead them into what is right and what is wrong, and he's chosen by God. So if he's wrong, and if he's so horrific, then I don't think that any of them can stand up and hold a hand and say, yeah, that's okay, God isn't at fault. Well, God actually commanded them. That's, that's, a, very, them. that's a very good point, and uh, I'll tell you what, I will back off from my previous statement and say that uh, I think in actual practice, 
you don't find believers in any religion being uniformly in agreement with the teachings of their own church. No what, you, what you say about what is taught in the Catholic Church is, is correct, but not, I, I've met Catholics who don't, you know, they'll just go, yeah, well, you know, that's what they say, but I'm still a Catholic and I, yeah. I still yeah, think that the it's US. the right kind of thing, but yeah, over yeah. here that's very common. So I'll, re I'll back off from my previous statement and say only those people who don't actually take it, um, uh, take everything that they're taught by their church that seriously can uh, maybe deserve yeah. a little bit of wiggle room. Okay? Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair enough. I just, I think it's very important to, um, I think that more people now are leaving the Catholic Church for that reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it should be made, um, made a point. Yeah, uh, well, that's, a, that's a very good point you raised small point that I wanted to just, because uh, you were asking about this arrest thing that uh, yeah. um, Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens are looking into. Now, um, uh, uh, the, I, I have a slight correction on that. Dawkins has said that his only involvement was Hitchens came to him uh, with the idea. Dawkins recommended a civil rights uh, lawyer that he knew, and, yeah. uh, and that's it. It's, it's, it's Hitchens. It's Christopher Hitchens who got the, who, who went looking for the lawyer. In that regard, they okay. actually claimed that he said that he would arrest him, which uh, some other people referenced the Dawkins website where he said he didn't. But I, I okay, the page wasn't loading, so, I so this right. is a little little uh, right. distraction. So anyway, but, but that aside, basically the idea was that yeah, Hitchens and Dawkins were looking with a human rights lawyer to build a case against arresting the, the Pope if right. he were to come to the UK. And right. That, as I, I understand, think, as I understand it, there's a scheduled visit coming up by the Pope. Yes. Yes. Okay. Quite soon. Yeah. And I, I, I really hope I would have been the one to arrest him, but that didn't happen. But yeah, it was really. Well, right. it, it would. It'll be interesting. Uh, it'll, it'll be an interesting TV, as they say. <laughs> yeah, I <hope> historically, <laughs> I don't think anyone would go through with it, but his, I really his, hope someone does. Well, you know, nobody has the balls here in the United States to do it, so we're we're really hoping you all do it. You know, historically, Britain <laughs> yeah. has had issues with the Catholic Church before, as I recall. So, yeah, um, it, it's not necessarily that it was necessarily atheist. It was more no, um, no, right, Anglican Church and correct, and rather than. Yeah, um, and and your and and a wacky king you had. Better. Yeah. All yeah. right. Anyway, I just wanted to make that comment. So thanks, thanks very much. Thank you, Leo. Uh, good show. Thanks. Thanks. Good. Good luck to you, sir. Uh, how are we doing? Um, I have a note here of when I'm supposed to. Okay, we can get at least one more in. Uh, we'll go to Theodore in Sweden. Hello. Hi, Theodore. Hey. Um, how you doing? Good. You. Good. I'm doing good. Kind of late, but I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, anyway, I uh, I was thinking you were talking about well, among other things, uh, arresting the Pope, and we actually had a case um, here in Sweden a couple of years ago, about five years ago, I think. Yeah. There was a there was this pastor in a small town here in Sweden who he had. Some of his congregation so enamored or in love with him that he actually was able to have one of them kill two girls. Wow. Two nannies uh, of his. Hmm. And uh, they actually really did arrest him, and he's in, in prison now. And, uh, oh, sure. I don't think the, he's getting out anytime soon. There, but I'm, there, I'm there wondering. Have... Just that seemed like a, a quite a de development even here in Sweden, which is really a, a um, you can but. here in the U.S. There have been stories of uh, of of pastors arrested for fraud, arrested for murder, arrested for all kinds of crazy things. It's the the Pope story is you know I think a bigger deal because that's the head of the organization. Yeah, you know, yeah, obviously. Then, uh, it's the, the only comparable thing I can think of church. is, you know, Jim and Tammy Baker here in the U.S. or Swagger. Well, no, no, no. It was, and he's claimed diplomatic immunity uh, in, in, a, in a case here in the United yeah. States as, as supposedly the head of the Vatican State. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so that's that's what makes this a little more interesting. To, to fill in what Jeff said, there's an organization here in the U.S. for our U.S. audience called the Freedom from Religion Foundation, and they they publish a, a monthly newsletter. Where it's it's two, two whole pages every month of 
what they call black collar crimes of, of all these different uh, ministers and things that have been caught doing these very things or, or sentenced to this or, or whatever. And, and uh, I guess for folks that are atheists, uh, you know, they, they seem to, they seem to uh, you know, there's no, there's no notion that these folks belong on any sort of pedestal. Right. You know, there, there's no notion that they're right. that they're better than anybody else, uh, and in and in many cases, I think they're 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 worse. Right? They have they have more temptations, and they they uh, yeah. they have more uh, opportunity to, to 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 do bad things. And 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 in, and in some cases, like in this pedophilia thing, you know, having the cover of of being a a minister or a priest or whatever allows you to to have access to to situations where you wouldn't otherwise so so it may actually attract those sorts of people yeah 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 uh, definitely yeah there's a but, connection it's kind of like a chairman in the business or yeah, yeah. stuff yeah. like that but okay. it, it, i was thinking that it's well might not be as new in the states as it is in, in sweden as such yeah. but that might be because we are we're not really big on religion generally yeah. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I was thinking that, do you think that that is a, um, progressing in a sense? Is it accelerating all over the world that well, we are well, we, to we got see a that we can hold the priesthood accountable? Like That's a really good question. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It doesn't feel to me like in general uh, and then, again, that might be just because I'm in the U.S., but it doesn't feel to me like, in general, uh, priests and ministers are uh, any more likely to be held accountable for crimes they've committed now than it did, say, 20 years ago. But this, the outcry against the Pope, again, does seem like a different kind of thing, like a different level of, you know, awareness of the yeah. you know potential risks yeah, so i don't know it's, it's a really good question I, I kind of see that as something it's special in a way it symbolizes something maybe yeah i th I, th yeah. I hope so i hope so i th i think we in the united states i think there is a little bit of a movement that is feeding into this atheist movement of people being a little bit fed up with religion and the sort of uh goofy things that that are done in the name of religion i i sense that there is some movement towards let's let's step away from this uh, we have a group here in the united states um a demographic group called the nuns the none of the above the people who i don't identify with particular religions and this is the largest growing group in the united states right now and i'm hoping this trend continues now not all of those people are atheists but these are people who have said enough of organized religion, I'm going to step away from it. And I think that these are people sort of on their way to becoming atheists or potential atheists. Uh, and I, I think that this is a good thing. I think the, the, the Pope scandal in, in some ways is, uh, is, is a blessing for us. It's, it's a way uh, for people to be made more aware of the abuses that are going on and make it more socially acceptable to talk about these sorts of things and to register our disgust and our frustration. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, and thank you night. for calling. Thank All you. Right. See you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Okay. Uh, they are putting the credits up. Does that mean we're done? Well, I think we're we're pretty close. By to my about thirty button, seconds. We have thirty seconds. Should we try to no, see no, what no, Andrew no. can tell us in thirty seconds? <laughs> oh, it's no. Time to All wrap right. Up. Well, no Andrew, stay on the line. We'll talk to you. Uh, uh, do an after show thing. Get, or, sh or shoot us an email at tv at atheist experience or that, um, and we'll try to answer it. Take care. Bye bye.